Henry's fifth wife was Catherine Howard. Catherine and Henry were married one year, three months and 26 days. Her motto as Queen of England was, no other will than his. Catherine's badge is a crown Tudor rose. This is the same as Henry's, except Catherine's does not have a thorn. Henry called Catherine his blushing rose without a thorn. Her character was described as vivacious, giggly and brisk. She displayed great interest in her dance lessons, but would often be distracted during them and make jokes. She also had a nurturing side for animals, especially dogs. She had hazel green eyes and a love of the French fashion. Catherine was just under five feet tall. She must have looked tiny compared to Henry who was over six feet. The French ambassador described her as petite, plump and pretty, demure and dainty, with peaches and cream complexion and Tudor blonde hair. Today we often call this strawberry blonde. It's a light reddish blonde colour. When Catherine's parents married, her mother, Joyce Culpepper, already had five living children from her first husband, Sir Ralph Lee. She went on to have another six with Catherine's father, Sir Edmund Howard, Catherine being about her mother's tenth child. With little to sustain the family, her father was often reduced to begging for handouts from his more affluent relatives. Soon after the death of her mother in childbirth, Catherine was sent to live with her step-grandmother, Agnes, Dowager Duchess of Norfolk. The Duchess of Norfolk had been a prominent court figure in her day, and many parents in hopes of advancing their children's chances in court placed their children under her care. The Duchess offered a comfortable home at Chesworth House. She did not, however, provide strict supervision for her wards and allowed her granddaughter Catherine to run wild. Catherine attracted many men from an early age and under her grandmother's lax supervision had two affairs. Catherine's music teacher Henry Mannix taught her the virginal and the flute and also tried to seduce his young pupil. Francis Derham, a gentleman in the service of the Duchess, would creep up to share Catherine's bed in the girl's dormitory. A maid who shared the room refused to sleep nearby because of all of the puffing and blowing that came from Catherine's bed. In the spring of 1540, Catherine's uncle, the Duke of Norfolk, arranged for her to go to court as a maid of honour to Anne of Cleves, a leader of the faction of conservative Catholic nobles, the Duke of Norfolk, who had already seen one niece become queen, Anne Boleyn, hoped Catherine's marriage to the king would advance his faction's interests and lead to his own rise in power. By all accounts, the now 49-year-old Henry fell in love at first sight with Catherine. As the annulment of his marriage to Anne of Cleves proceeded, Henry began to court Catherine. The two were married at Orleans Palace on the 20th of July, 1540. The marriage was made public on the 8th of August, and prayers were said in the Chapel Royal at Hampton Court Palace. The king embarked on a lavish spending spree to celebrate his marriage. With extensive refurbishments and developments at the Palace of Whitehall, this was followed by more expensive gifts for Christmas at Hampton Court Palace. She enjoyed the masks and balls at court and danced with men while Henry, unable to partner her, looked on. She relished being indulged by her husband and basked in the attention she received from everyone. Anne of Cleves visited Catherine and knelt before her with gifts. In one instance, the two women danced the night away while Henry, with his abscessed leg, retired to bed. 
Catherine did not get along well with her stepdaughter Mary, who was seven years older than her. Mary refused to acknowledge Catherine as her stepmother and give her the respect she had previously given to Jane Seymour and Anne of Cleves. The tension was so bad that they constantly bickered when in each other's company. In spring 1541, Catherine embarked upon a romance with Henry's favourite male courtier and her first cousin, Thomas Culpepper. He was first introduced into Catherine's personal life in March of 1541 when King Henry went on a trip to Dover and left Catherine at Greenwich. The couple's meetings were arranged by one of Catherine's older ladies-in-waiting, Jane Boleyn, Viscountess Rochford, the widow of Catherine's executed cousin, George Boleyn. On the 30th of June, Catherine and Henry travelled north to York in the hope of meeting James V of Scotland. They arrived at Lincoln on the 9th of August, where Culpepper met Catherine for another secret meeting in her bedchamber. These meetings continued in Pontefract Castle after the court arrived on the 23rd of August. On the 27th of August 1541, Francis Derham approached his former lover seeking employment. Queen Catherine made him her private secretary and then a gentleman usher of the Queen's chamber. Derham was a braggart, unable to keep his mouth shut. He brashly boasted that if the King died, he would marry Catherine. When the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Cranmer, presented Henry with evidence of Catherine's indiscretions, the King was stunned. Lady Rochford was interrogated and from fear of being tortured agreed to tell all. She told how she had watched the back stairs as Culpepper made his escape from the Queen's room. On the 2nd of November 1541, Archbishop Thomas Cranmer left a letter for Henry in the Holy Day Closet at Hampton Court Palace, detailing Catherine's colourful past and how she had lived most corruptly and sensually. She wrote a letter of confession to the King, begging for his mercy and stating that her relationship with Derham had ended almost a year before the King's Majesty was married to my Lady Anne of Cleves. But the King's Council were now aware of Culpepper, who subsequently confessed to a recent relationship with Catherine. Henry broke down in tears, then asked for his sword, so he could run her through himself. Catherine was stripped of her title as Queen on the 23rd of November 1541. Culpepper and Derham were charged on the 1st of December 1541 with high treason. They were executed at Tyburn on the 10th of December. Culpepper being beheaded and Derham was hung, drawn and quartered. According to custom, their heads were placed on spikes atop of London Bridge. Catherine herself remained in limbo until Parliament introduced a Bill of Attender on the 29th of January 1542, which was passed on the 7th of February. The Royal Assent by Commission Act of 1541 made it treason and punishable by death for a Queen Consort to fail to disclose her sexual history to the King within 20 days of their marriage, or to incite someone to commit adultery with her. When the Lords of the Council came for her, she panicked and screamed aloud for Henry as they manhandled her into the waiting barge that would escort her to the Tower on Friday the 10th of February. Her flotilla passed under London Bridge, where the heads of Culpepper and Derham were impaled. The night before she was due to be executed, Catherine requested that the executioner's block be brought to her so that she could rehearse her final appearance as Queen. Throughout the night, Catherine practiced placing her head on the block, determined to die with dignity and composure. At around 7 o'clock on Monday, February the 13th, Catherine dressed in a practical black velvet gown 
was escorted to the scaffold. She was so weak she could barely stand, but managed to make a short speech in which she admitted she was justly condemned. She prayed for the king and asked for God's mercy. As she finished her speech, her lady stepped forward. They removed her mantle and placed a linen cap on her head. A blindfold was then placed over her eyes and she was helped to place her head on the block and arrange her skirts. A few moments later, she was beheaded with a single stroke. Lady Rochford was executed immediately after. Both their bodies were buried in an unmarked grave in the nearby chapel of St Peter ad Vincula, where the bodies of Catherine's cousins Anne and George Boleyn also lay. Upon hearing the news of Catherine's execution, Francis I of France wrote a letter to Henry regretting the lewd and naughty behaviour of the Queen and advising him that the lightness of women cannot bend to the honour of men. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.